Today, we will go over the steps on how to create dimension tables and effect tables and see how do we organize the indexes and then eventually we'll connect the dimension tables with the effect table. And again, the reasons for doing that is to increase performance when we pull the data from the cube so we can create reports that work very fast. Let's start. Uh, let's go into the Visual Studio. I just, uh, uh, I just opened uh, the file that we're gonna use. The file, you can download the file right on the website. I made the link here right for you. You can click on it, download it, double click on it. And after you double click on it, it will open right here. Here we have really all the comments that we need for this session. And then we'll do one little thing that does not exist in this file. It's linking the tables. Okay, let's see. The first command we're already familiar with. This one just bring that when I run it, it will connect and it will open up uh, the default database PTO underscore DW underscore Amos. When you carry out this exercise, please change the name Amos to your team name. And then it will show immediately the team name, your own team name. As you can see here, uh, some of you already have created your own uh, database. And when you run it, for example, uh, for team 11, you change Amos to team 11 and everything should work right and create everything necessary in team 11. Make sure that you have the previous exercise, otherwise it won't work, okay? For example, you, uh, for example, in team 11, let's give it a second, yeah, in team 11, we don't really have any tables, so they have to create first the table, uh, the table, uh, Task underscore DW. Without it, you won't be able to carry this exercise. So let's move on. Okay, this one I said you can really ignore. After all, this is just mm -hmm. some uh, definitions for the database or the type of the table we create. For us, for these purposes, it doesn't really have any meaning. The first command. You really don't need them because you don't really have any tables. But since I already have done tables, that's a good opportunity also to explain what a drop command in SQL does. If you see in my database, I have a table that called effect tasks. Effect tasks. If I don't really see it, let's refresh. Refresh. I should have it. Yes, I didn't run it. Uh, in fact, really every table that exists, if it doesn't exist, it will ignore the drop, okay? Here we go, I have fact tasks. It will, it, it will drop the table if it exists, okay? So since fact tasks exist here, and we're gonna create it in a minute again, it, it will drop it. Drop it means it will delete it. So this one will delete the four dim di dimensions we're gonna create, and also will delete the fact that we're gonna create this in this session. That one, it's there just because I already have done it. So if I run this command, if I run this command, uh, those tables are gone. If I will refresh here, they will be done. Mm -hmm. Here we go. So all those tables are deleted. Drop means delete, delete the table. Okay, what do we have here? If you, as we did in the previous sessions, creating a table, it's very simple. I have create table and I give a name. I don't really have to write on which database it is because I already carried that first command. This is tells me if I don't put the database name, it will automatically will assume it is PTO underscore DW underscore Amos 
So here when I write create table and I give it the location, that would create a table right here with that name on the same database. The most important thing, the rest is really, this one is creating the primary key on the first one, on the first day column, which is P key, which I usually like to call in a dimension table. So this first column on this table, gonna be a small integer, meaning up to 32,000 numbers. Those tables are very small, so that would be good enough. And then it will add another column. In this case, it will call it location. So this is a table with two columns, picky and location. A uh, picky will be also a primary key. And what does the job, it's really this command. Don't dive into that too much. I mean, it's a totally different course to be able to know every command here. And that's not the purpose of this course. For our purposes, it's really creating, you can really copy it as it is. Just change the name of the table, change the name of the columns, and then just change the name of the primary key. It will do the job. That's exactly, if you look at the second table, which is the month, I could have called it the mid the time, the date, or whatever. But here, since I know that there are only months, I, I call it the month. And again, two columns, one for the primary key, one for the name of the months, and the primary key going to be on the first column, P key. And the name of the primary key is P key, the month. Same things for the type. Okay, if I look at the dim type, I have create table, dim type, and this is gonna be the third dimension, same structure. Finally, we have another one, which is dim department, and again, PT, department, primary key. Now, how did I come up with creating those four dimensions? Okay, let's look for a second, table we created last time, the test, uh, DW. This is the one that we unpivot the original table. So let's look at that one one more time. If we look at this table, we have a column for type, we have a column for location, we have a column for department, we have a column for month. So I'm going to create a dimension for each one of them. And the key point is I don't really want to keep characters in this column. I don't want to keep any characters here. In fact, this one could have done. It's, I could have left that one just for the nice organization I created that I mentioned. But I could have kept that and don't create that I mentioned just because this is all integers. So that could have worked without creating an explicit uh, dimension. Uh, if I have not created a dimension, this one even I have a name, it's called de Degenerated Dimension. It's a dimension without creating a dimension. But in our case, we created a dimension for that purpose. Finally, the last column month, uh, I'm making a dimension with all the months that we have January up to December. So we have four tables that are going to replace those words and put just integer inside. And in a second, it will be clearer. For now, we created four dimension. Let's just create them. I just mark all of those. All right, I can mark the whole things. Uh, on it, and it will create all those four dimensions, all, all, all those four tables. Let's refresh here, and look at that, tables. And we'll see, in fact, all those tables will be empty tables because we haven't put anything. We just created them. Here we go, we have DM departments, locations, month, and we have type. But they're all empty. Now, we want to start filling up the tables. Fill up the tables, we're going to fill them up from the original table. For example, for the monthers, we really want to find which monthers exist in this column. And since there are repetitions, we're not going to repeat for each one, we just really want January up to December. So let's look at this table. How do I create 
uh, for the month. Uh, let me jump with it to the month. I'll come back with the other ones as well. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I want to spend more time on the month. So let's start with time, okay? Yeah, I want to spend more time. I think that the month uh, uh, required a little more thinking uh, than the other one. So let's start with the simple one. Let's look at the type. Type we have budget and forecast. So, in fact, I'm expecting for this dimension to have only two rows in it. So, how do I create two rows out of this one? If I look at the select command, which we have seen in the previous session, I am selecting type from this table. But there is another word that says distinct. Distinct means if there's a repetition, don't show it to me. Show it to me once. So let's run it. I'm not inserting any data. I'm just looking on what data exists in that column. The column type in this database, okay, it's in fact, uh, there are only two, budget and forecast. Next stage, is to insert it into the new table we just created before. We created here, here we go, in that. But there is two columns. I only want to populate the column that says department. Department uh, uh, in the, sorry, uh, the type, take my, take, uh, sorry about it, dim type. In the dim type, the only things I want to populate is the column that says type. Okay, I don't really want to, this one I want it to be filled automatically. One thing I mentioned before, are worth repeating. If I put identity here, one, one, it will automatically fill up the numbers here uh, by itself. I mean, the database will do that. The only things I will populate is this column. So let's try it and see what, what do I mean by that. Let's run this one. And let's insert into the dim type, but we're gonna insert only type. And as you see here in the bottom, there's only one column. This select part, only creating one column. So by marking the whole things here, I'm inserting one column into this table. What happened with the other column of the primary key? That will be filled automatically. Let's run it. Okay, I ran it. It tells me that there are two rows affected, meaning it populated two rows. Let's see what happened here. Let's look at this table now. Okay. The table was empty when we created it. Now when we look at it, we will see there are two columns. We just entered those two, but those one were filled automatically. How did the computer know how to do that? I just told him to when you create a table, when we created the table, I told him this one going to be identity column. This is going to be identity, meaning fill it up by numbers and jump by one each time. Okay, that does the job of filling up primary key. Or any key, in fact, but it's usually used with a primary key. Some things apply to really all the other tables. Uh, some things for the location, if you notice, very similar. The only reason I put, if you notice, I put there is truncate. Truncate means delete the content of the table. If there is any content, just delete it. But it doesn't delete the table itself. The wrap delete the whole table, meaning delete the table. But truncate is delete the content of the table. So just for make sure that I don't duplicate or enter something twice, I run the whole things here, it will populate the dim location as well. And here I have three rows, he entered there three rows, some things for the departments, I will click on it, and then it will populate it, there's also three rows. Uh, if you notice the monthers, I did a little different, and why? That's a fact. Uh, a challenge for you. Let's see if somebody can guess why I didn't do it the same way. I could have done exactly the same way by the same command, and you will get exactly a table with all the monthly. But something will not work right. And that's how we leave you as an exercise. And in class, we'll talk about it. So let's see. First one, as we said before, this one will truncate, meaning make sure that table is empty. 
What does the first command does? The first command does insert into the table, exactly as we did before. But this time, I'm only putting two columns here. I'm putting the primary key and the month. And this time, I'm making sure that for January, I'll put the number one. Well, that's a hint on the, the challenge I gave you before. So if I run it, okay, if I run the, only this part of the command, I'm entering only one row. And that row will be that I will have in the table D month, I will have a one row, which include, let me open that one, we'll see that. I will have a, only one row with the month January. Okay, the number one was not automatically entered. I entered it manually, kind of manually, yeah, by writing this command, by putting the one here. For February, I'm making sure February will take number two. I, can, I run for each one of them, each one of them will be en entering a column, a row, sorry, a row into the, the table. Let me run all of them, and then I will go back, if you see here, every, every command, generating generating is inserting one row into it and if you look here now let's refresh it and we'll see all the months very important was to make sure that these numbers will match the months and just think about when i can get stuck if i don't do that okay let's close that one we have created all the dimension tables uh, and that one was based on the, the, the data we had in the, the, the unpivot the, uh, table that we created for this session. Uh, okay, finally, we have to start dealing with the fact table. Okay, we're creating a fact table, very similar to what we did in the other one. If you notice, four columns for, to link to the dimension, all of them are small integers, makes sense, and the amount. Okay, so now if you can, you can see that the fact table has only numbers as we always mentioned in previous sessions. Fact table is supposed to have only numbers, indexes are all integers, and the amount or what we call measure, it will be a decimal slash float, uh, as mathematicians like to call them. So okay, I'm running it and creating the fact table. Now that I have the fact table, we're getting to the most complicated SQL command. Okay, that's always the easy one. This one, just making sure the table is empty. So since I just created it, of course, this one doesn't do anything because the table is empty. But if it wasn't empty, that one would delete everything in the content of the table. This one will insert into the table whatever this command does. And here it's a little, looks like complicated, but it really isn't, okay? Uh, if you looked at the video, the short video of the 10 minutes I recommended, it talks about how to link tables. He's using the joint command with the where. So, but I'm not gonna use that because this one is a straightforward and easy one. So I have a select, I have a form, I have a where, three components of the SQL command. Which tab is going to be involved in creating these SQL? There are, in fact, five tabs. Let's see. The task DW, that's the original one from last session. Then the new one that we just created, the DIM department, DIM location, DIM month, DIM type, and, and DIM time. Uh, you will ask, you might ask yourself, what is this kind of writing? The writing means that uh, every time I want to refer to this table, I want to refer it in a shortcut. Shortcut means the, the letter uh, T will be kind of an alias to the whole name. So I don't have to repeat the whole name every time. For example, when I'm writing here T dot something, it's really refer to this table. So in the form, when I am defining which tables are involved in this SQL command, I can write the table names and give each one of them alias. So for the, depart the DIM department, I give it a D 
So D, it's really another name for the whole name of the table. Uh, when I'm linking tables, I want to link, for example, the table task DW with the table department. So I say, well, T, the column department in the table uh, tasks underscore DW will match the column uh, of the departments, the, the, dep the DIM departments with the column departments. So when I'm combining those two tables, when I want to combine those two tables, okay, I'm combining them using those two columns. If we think about it for a second, in fact, I'm combining all the tables to the original table, okay? I'm combining the location with the, the team location. I'm combining the T month that we just created in the original table with the dim dimensions of the month. The same things with the type. So in another word, I'm really combining all the dimensions with the original uh, task DW. Why do I do that? Because after I'm combining them, what I'm really interested in is in the new indexes in the dimensions table. So if I see P dot P T, in fact, I'm going to the type and I really want to take now the index and not the name that exists in the Task DW. Let me run it without inserting the data. So we'll see how that one will look like now. Here we go. This is really what this command does. I'm getting now in the place, in the first place of the type, I'm getting one up to, and then it will start replacing the two. If we look at it here, I have up to 96, I am getting all ones. Let's go and look at this table again. And not the DIM table, we're going to the original, this one, I think I might have it open, yeah, I do. Uh, if you look at the, this column, okay, the first column is really, it says budget, but I don't really want the word budget, I want the number one, which is in the dimension, and I want to replace it. So if you look up to 96, it's also a budget, I'm gonna replace all of those by the number one, and then from here down, I'm going to replace it by number two. And that's really what this command does. Let's see where we are. Here we are. So by combining, here we go. Let's look at that one more time. Wolf it. I have it. This is the original table. I'm combining the original table with the DIM type right here. I have T that type combined with P that type. After I combine them, okay, I am only putting out in the select only the P key, and the P key is really the numbers, and I'm ignoring the original budget or forecast towards in their column. After I'm having this table in the right way, now I want to insert it into the fact table. So let's run the whole command here, running it, and now all the data will be 192 rows, as we know from last session. That's the number of rows we have. So let's look at that table. It should be exactly as we had, as we had in the SQL command. Just now it's in the fiscal table existing in the database. Here we go, we have effect tasks, and we do a click. And let's see what we have inside the table, and the table is exactly the way we want it. So beautiful. So we have effect table, and we have four dimension tables. Now we want to link them. One way to do it, just create a diagram, new database diagram. Unfortunately, these tools have some problems in Microsoft. And so if it kind of get crazy, don't, don't be, don't get ir irritated by that. But 
theoretically it's a possibility to walk in the right way. Unfortunately, I know this bug for many years and, but, uh, okay. So I'm adding, I'm adding the task, which is my fact table. Okay. I am adding to this uh, diagram, I'm going to add the department. I'm going to add the location. I'm going to add the location. I'm going to add, I'm going to add the location and then the month. And finally we have one more to type. Now, now I've closed this one. They look like just five tables. They are kind of unrelated, but the truth of the matter, they are all related. They're related to the fact tasks. So let's organize it somehow this way. It look nicer. Uh, this still has some kind of a little magnifier. So I can, I can move a little bit and find other tables that I couldn't see otherwise. Let's move here back. Here we go. We have four dim dimensions and we have a task table. Our job now to create a link between dimensions to the fact table. So here we go. I'm going to click on the primary key of the dim type and drag it to the where it says PT type. And then you will know how to create a link between those two. And as we mentioned last time, which kind of a, of a relationship that will be, it will be one to many for every row that we have here, we might have several rows in the fact table. In fact, here we have only two rows, as you remember, one and two, one for budget, one for, for forecast. And here we have 192 rows, so it's really one to many. Some thanks for location. I'll click here. I'll drag it, or its location here. Click, and it create the link. Some thanks from the departments. Let's make sure that's goes to the departments. I always try to make sure that by mistake I didn't really put it on the wrong column on the wrong wrong column, yeah? So I'm making sure that this is the department it's come from the PT or the DIM department goes to the PT department in the fact desk. And then I will do okay. Then I know I didn't make any mistake because it doesn't really seem clear here. Okay. Last, I'm clicking on the month. I'm clicking on the PT. And what is the month here? Right here. Make sure I'm putting it on the right place. Making sure that this is comes from the dim month PT goes to the effect text to the column PT month. That's good. Beautiful. Now that I have the links, I have to save it. When you're saving the diagram, it automatically will create the links. So when I'm saving it, let's call it diagram a dimension. Uh, let's call it just ET. ETL1, just for, that's I think the way I called it, the first exercise. I'm saving, as it saves, same time is creating the connections between the tables. So it's creating already what it called form T. This one comes to be like a form T for this, this is a form T for the other one, and here is asking me, do you really want to save all of those one? When I say yes, it's creating a form T between the effect table and the dimension tables. Okay, uh, let me be clear on that one. When I say here a month, okay, I have a table of dimension tables and I have here a PT. This one is a form T for this column. Okay, so this column cannot have any name that doesn't exist in this table. Thank you, and we'll see you for the next section.